Let's move over to a panel called Detail. Uh, typically there's a couple of things that we, we may want to do in the detail. Um, there's a conservative amount of sharpening being applied to raw files in Lightroom CC. There are other applications that um, will sharpen a lot more than Lightroom CC. If you do like very sharp detail, you are going to want to raise that slider from its default of 40 and maybe double that slider uh, somewhat. If you do that, I would encourage you to raise an, um, another slider there called the masking slider. This will limit the sharpening only to the high contrast edges of your subject, uh, which will give that illusion of a very sharp file. What the masking slider does is it prevents sharpening the areas of continuous tone. Um, and the problem with sharpening areas of continuous tone is if we have any noise in those areas, the noise will look sharper and more obvious. We can use a two finger slide. We encountered this on when we were looking for clipping of detail on the blacks, whites, highlights, shadows in the light panel. We also have this option and working with the masking slider to put two fingers next to that slider and move forwards and backwards. Um, and this will go take the image into what's called threshold view. As you move that slider, anything that appears black is not being sharpened. Anything that remains white is being sharpened. One of the things that I can also mention is if you are having trouble moving these sliders accurately is don't touch the pin itself. Just tap either side of the pin and the, um, the values of the adjustment will go up in small incremental values. Uh, if you're having trouble raising a slider by maybe three or five, just tap to the right or left of the pin and you'll make those small incremental changes. Let's look at um, uh, another one of the um, controls that we have in the detail panel, which is the control over the noise. Now, uh, a lot of people often comment that when I'm posting images captured at a high ISO, their camera never looks as good at high ISO as my camera. And it's typically not the camera because we're using the same camera. It's how I've treated the post-production editing, in particular working sensitively with high ISO, a lot of noise in the images. So one of the things that I might do is in the detail panel, I might uh, raise um, uh, the noise by 10 or 15. If you raise the detail slider, uh, the noise slider too much to the right, you will lose fine detail. So uh, detail in feathers, sharp detail will start to be raised from view. Yes, we can suppress all of the noise, but again, our tones and surfaces will start looking like extruded plastic. So what I recommend doing is removing most of the noise with a selective adjustment. Basically use um, the adjustment brush or use a radial filter and apply the adjustment not to the middle of the filter as we were adding light to the woman's face previously. I'm adding the noise reduction to the outside of that filter. Now if you're not too sure whether the adjustment is apply, being applied to the inside or outside, just tap that pin to see the overlay. A weird thing about the noise reduction slider I should um, point out here is um, moving noise higher is moving noise reduction higher. So noise will appear less as we raise the value higher. It seems a bit counterintuitive. I wish they'd have put the, uh, the, the word reduction after noise so it seemed a little bit uh, more obvious why we're raising that slider higher and not lower. So here, here I am tapping the pin and it's showing the sharpness in this particular instance is being applied to the center, which is the uh, wrong place here. Uh, as if we are doing any negative sharpness or negative noise reduction, we need to apply it on the outside of that. So uh, here I am uh, applying noise reduction um, to the outside. Let's just go back one slide. You'll see the little red arrow there points to the way we can invert whether the um, uh, adjustment is being applied outside or inside of the radial filter there. 
The effect of doing this is a way of protecting the sharp detail on our subject. Noise is typically less obvious when we have lots of sharp detail uh, on our subject. It's most obvious in the areas of continuous tone, such as the outer focus bokeh behind our subject. So this is typically where I'm applying the noise reduction. Here is an example of an image I captured at ISO 8000 and we'll, we're mostly aware of the noise uh, behind the bird and not on the bird itself. So one of the things that I would also say is if you do like sharp images um, you may want to just reduce the amount of sharpness and also mask the sharpness just to make sure that you're not sharpening the noise aggressively before following up and going in with noise reduction. The other thing I'd encourage you to do is if you are shooting at elevated or high ISO values in camera is avoid underexposure. Underexposure in camera will tend to exaggerate the presence of noise as well. So here I am editing with the noise reduction and keeping the noise reduction away from the feather uh, plumage of the bird. So we're getting maximum detail in the bird and uh, um, minimum noise um, in the background behind the image. So for many people, if I put this image up on a 4K ultra high definition monitor, it looks like it was captured at ISO 400, not ISO 8000. So, and there is the processed image. If you're reviewing this movie on a 4K monitor, you'll probably nod your head and going, yes, that looks pretty good. I shouldn't be afraid of those high ISOs, especially on full frame cameras anymore. And here I am doing a noise reduction. I'm painting it in a few controlled areas now, uh, and I'm working at 12,800 on a full frame Sony sensor here. Okay, another panel we can look at is a panel called Optics. If you're using um, maybe uh, capturing with RAW files, maybe on kit lenses that are uncorrected, you may notice in post-production um, some barrel or pin cushion distortion. Basically verticals or lines that should be straight there are bowing. This usually is most um, prevalent on cheaper quality of lenses. But we don't have to live with this. We can just come down to the optics panel and we can look for that enable lens correction a little uh, switch there and switch that on. This does appear in the preferences. We can um, enable this by default so that we don't have to remember to do this. And this will now always correct any pincushion or barrel distortions. There are a few exceptions. If the camera doesn't recognize the lens uh, and uh, Lightroom doesn't recognize the lens, it might not have enough information to be able to fully correct that. So you may have to start correcting that manually using the panel below called the geometry panel. So this is the dist uh, distortions corrected. They're still leaning in because we're using an ultra wide angle lens and the camera is tilted up slightly. So we do have those converging verticals. And what I would do is go down into that geometry panel, click on the upright and choose auto. And now that will not only correct the distortions that the lens has provided, but also correct the converging verticals so they are fully corrected as well. Now there is occasionally an instance where the auto upright uh, will get it wrong, in which case you just tap uh, one undo. And then you go to um, the sliders below and you can start um, uh, dragging those sliders. If you have any barrel distortion that wasn't corrected automatically, you'll use the top slider called the distortion. And this will try and counteract the effects of any uh, barrel distortion that you might have going on in your lens. Here I am making those corrections manually, adjusting the vertical and also doing a small rotation. Now there is a little switch there which is highlighted blue called Constrain Crop. It is important just to enable that otherwise you might get some white negative areas around where the corrections have taken place which are not part of the image. It's basically just showing um, a blank 
canvas area um, because there are no image pixels in that area. By switching on the constrained crop, the image will automatically be zoomed a little bit so we don't see those negative areas anymore. There is um, uh, another feature in the optics panel called chromatic aberration or CA. Um, we can have this corrected automatically. Again, if you're using a non-native lens, you might uh, encounter an instance where it is not corrected. If you were to pinch zoom, look in the corners of your image, especially when using wide angle lenses and you have some high contrast edges. If you see these color fringes going around the high contrast edges, usually complementary colors, depending on what side of the edge we're working on. This is um, one form of chromatic aberration. And just by enabling that panel, uh, we can correct uh, and remove that. There is a chromatic aberration that Lightroom CC on the mobile versions uh, doesn't yet have the ability to remove. This is typically when we're using ultra wide aperture lenses such as f1.4, 1.8 lenses capturing images at their widest apertures where we have a very high contrast edges. Typically against uh, an area which has very bright exposure we might get a color sitting on that edge that simply doesn't belong. Like we have a purple edge sitting alongside the edge of this guy's hand in Japan. Now in the Lightroom desktop version, we do have the ability just to highlight that color and remove that chromatic aberration as well as the other chromatic aberration as well. But currently, as uh, at the time of making this movie, this is not available to us on the mobile versions. This is uh, the panel I use most often for uh, correcting uh, converging verticals. The process of correcting converging verticals is often referred to as key stoning. And key stoning uh, will correct those verticals. Now you may have to do it manually in some instances, but it has quite a high success rate. You will need to constrain the crop. Um, to avoid having negative canvas area around those corrections. And you may also want to revisit the crop tool because you may find that you want to make the crop marquee slightly smaller so we can reframe. We may have lost a little bit too much of the lower information in the auto keystoning, the uh, auto upright. So we may want to just make the, uh, the crop marquee slightly smaller just so we can push the crop marquee slightly lower. And again, I'm using that rule of thirds to put the horizon line on that lower uh, line of that rule of thirds there. This is one image that doesn't get corrected by the auto. Some of the verticals in the center of this image are not actually vertical. So uh, Lightroom gets very confused with what vertical it should be picking. Um, there are two verticals which are vertical, but Lightroom doesn't know. It needs to be told which are the verticals. So I'm going into the guided transform. There's a little icon there you can just tap on with your finger. And then you can start dragging up to four. You're going to need at least two of these um, lines that you need to drag in. This is basically telling um, a Lightroom, OK, I know these are horizontal or I know these are vertical. Please snap the image and correct them around these known values. And so again, once you've corrected that, you can in this illustration see some of the negative uh, canvas area coming into play there because constrained crop hasn't yet been switched on. I've switched constrained crop on now. I've magnified the view just to get a more accurate uh, positioning of these four guided uh, lines. And then uh, coming in again with the crop just to make sure that I get the perfect crop because sometimes you may lose some of the image out of frame um, when you've done that um, uh, 
Um, be sure to check out all of the movies in this Lightroom CC Masterclass series. There's also a supporting ebook that you can download from my website. Just head over to www.markgaylor.com and then look for that downloads link. If you find any of my resources useful, just consider making a small donation. This will help me create future learning resources. I also host a, a Patreon uh, site. This is uh, going to allow you to join Q&A forums where you'll have your individual questions answered and also attend seminars. I'll also give a photo critique service. Okay, so uh, thumbs up if you've enjoyed the movie and I'll catch you online next time.